Welcome to episode two of the Nest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big running sheet this week, Aaron. A lot to talk about. Um, so we'll start off with the Hobart City game, mate, from uh, last week. Yep, mate. Uh, obviously, uh, it was great to get back on North Hobart Oval. Um, after the surface, uh, had over a million dollars worth of uh, rebound, mate. So that was fantastic. It was a bit hard, but the ground was in fantastic condition. Uh, a little bit of rain, potty, and uh, the ground held up quite well. Yeah, mate, I've actually got on my notes here that the ground from the sidelines looked fabulous, mate. So I've used the word fabulous there. So it actually did, did look really well from the sidelines. Um, so good job to the curators um, on that part. Yeah, the other part, mate, too, that you've uh, done a fantastic job on the running shirts this week, so we know what we're talking about. But <laughs> look, uh, obviously Hobart City probably um, played on their terms at the start of the game, and we had a few missed opportunities. Uh, like we had the last few weeks, I think against Burnley, we kicked a fair few points in the first quarter could have really put them under the pump and we did the same against Hobart. Uh, throughout the game, um, it was quite an arm wrestle and we managed to swing it back our way and um, got away with it with a narrow victory. Yeah, it was a good, good result in the end from us. And uh, Josh Arnold's 60 metre point, um, I think he thought it was going to go through for a goal, faded very late. He's, the arm came up to celebrate, but yeah, then a point. Um, but he did still manage to talk about it for the week, mate. He's, he's pretty happy with the distance it carried and, and the, the kick off the shoe, mate. So have you heard about that one? Yeah, look, mate, if you live in the northern suburbs and you haven't heard about that, you are, you're living under a rock. So a big jazz, he was quite happy with his point. Uh, obviously thought he was going to get a goal, doesn't get to sneak forward very, uh, very much, but a running goal off the back line is always good. And what we're going to do now is swing to that vision. Uh, I don't, sure, don't know if we have the arm celebration as the camera sort of goes forward, but you can just imagine Jesmond was obviously giving it the point to his mum in the crowd and it actually ends up being a point, so we'll uh, have a look at that now. Obviously, uh, it's good to get forward and bang a goal, mate, but on that occasion, the big fella's missed, and yeah. I'd hate to think what happens if he does kick a goal, because we'll never hear the end of it. Uh, another, mate, so the hot topic um, from, uh, from that week, uh, weekend at North Hobart, obviously, was how, ground the, uh, how good the ground was, but another really, really big topic was Jacob Lincoln and the head count. Yeah, mate, that was a uh, very controversial uh, down there at North Hobart. I was actually watching it, you know, front row seats on the sidelines there, and... I think it how it panned out is, is Jacob Lincoln took it upon himself, mate, to, um, to to count the numbers while he was standing there in the back line and he actually realised that, that Hobart City had 19 on the ground, mate. Yeah, saying that he took his uh, took it upon himself, did he take his shoes and socks off? I heard he took his shoes and socks off just to get to 20. Uh, luckily enough, obviously 19 comes before 20, so he did imagine, man, uh, manage to get to that number. Yeah, he did, mate. He did a good job. He, um, a brave call uh, to, to get the umpires in and, and you know, claim that they've got the 19 on the field, which he did. They did the old-fashioned line up against each other, mate, and, and uh, he was right, they had one extra. So I've never seen a bloke, other than Josh Arnold, celebrate as much as Stink when, when the umpire said there's 19. He's doing these ones all around the ground, so yeah, it's good to see. The other point to that too, mate, obviously taking your wrist by calling the head count, because if you are wrong, you did do the week suspension. Am I right there? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure, mate. You've I'll, have to, I'll have to check that one, but I'm pretty sure if you call for a head count, it's actually a week suspension. So. Great work on, uh, great work by the uh, the non non skipper wasn't the skipper on the day. No, nah, I think that was the next uh, controversial would be the, the the umpire asked who was the skipper because they got a free shot on goal about 50 out and, and Links quickly put his hand up um, and he took the set shot. Jack Sharp's uh, disgust, mate, that he was actually captain, but he um, managed to stop the goal and, and celebrate quite hard again. So, so how far was the how far was the kick? Oh. 45, 50. Probably, probably good at the end of the day that Sharpie didn't take it. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't kick over a jam tin. Now yeah. moving on mate, so obviously just, just gone this weekend was a, a really big game for the football club. Yeah. Um, versus the arch rival Clarence here at KG5. Last time we uh, met these guys at round one they beat us by 34 points. So it was great to uh, bridge the gap, I would say we yeah. bridged the gap, but yeah. obviously we've still got a little bit of work to do. Yeah, I think too, we didn't we didn't play like we have in, you know, past this year. We didn't put a lot of things together. Um, we didn't use the ball as well, but it was a great positive, mate, that we did bridge the gap, and I reckon next time we'll come up against them, we'll be flying. So it's a positive there, mate. And, and just quickly on the Clarence uh, game for the Development League, um, they also had their opportunity lost. They went down. I'm not quite sure what the margin was in the end, Aaron, but they also went down. Um, come out, they come out flying, though, possibly. They, they come out flying, and they actually... Uh, kicked a fair few goals and put Clarence under the pump there for a while. Yep, yep, they did. And there's a lot of good signs like from the sidelines being injured. I, I pick up a lot. Like uh, Chris McKnight actually 
pulled the group in it towards the end of the game or after the game, sorry, and had a, had a good five minute discussion with them before the seniors ran out. So it's good to see someone so young like Chris McKnight, mate, pull them together and, and say some words to them. And the other exciting thing too was Alex Blair, who's been picked in one of the state programs. Uh, he played his first game and uh, kicked the goal too. And it was great to see the whole team get around Alex and, uh, and obviously celebrate his first goal in uh, Development League football. Yep. Another positive thing from the weekend is we had our uh, supplement sponsor, Peter Fulton, come down, Biceps Fulton, come down and play full forward. And as you said, mate, he ran through a couple of blokes. Yep, yep, he has. He's run through a couple of blokes, but he's nice enough to pick him back up to the deck a couple of times or so. And um, he, he uh, got on the end of a few, which was good to see. Um, obviously, he's selling protein powders now, to get people big, and it's obviously working if he's not pretty hard with those biceps he's carrying around. Yeah, look, obviously, uh, you'd be obviously number one customer. Is that right, mate? So, obviously, we've got the, we've got the Fit Folk shirt on there, and uh, you've got the, uh, the website to go down to. Obviously, you've spent 24 hours a day on there, and now you're out, mate, and, and smashing plenty of protein to, uh, to actually grow yourself pipes yourself. Yeah, mate, he's looking after me there. So, if you're, if you're after some protein or pre workout or anything like that, go to uh, www.fit freak .com.au. Um, Peter Fulton is his name and he can hook you up with some supplements there and help you out. Now the other, other few things mate, that come out of the game, uh, the women got a good win. Yep. Um, and they, and they beat uh, Devonport on Sunday, they played the next day. Uh, I think they had a pretty good crowd down. Um, it's not the same as the day before on Saturday, it was quite a good crowd here. It's probably our best home crowd for the season, which is yep. very positive. Yep, no that is positive mate. And um, we better mention these blokes so they'll get a um, a bit sad. Rainbird had 10 tackles in the senior game, which is a positive, mate. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, it doesn't do a heap offensively, um, but he plays his role week in, week out, and he's come away with another 10 tackles. Yeah, that's good. And Pickles also didn't have as many tackles, but he had 14 pressure acts, um, which if you want to explain to the viewers, mate, what a pressure yeah, act is. Yeah, the pressure act's obviously not a tackle, but it causes a turnover, so it's a uh, physical chase. Uh, or pressure applied on the player with the ball to cause a turnover. So Pickles has done a fantastic job there. And the other one too is uh, Jesmer Arnold. I uh, obviously spoke about his uh, 60 metre point, but he, on the weekend he had a fantastic game on stand and he, he uh, had a couple of times where he was one on one inside 50 and played his role for the team with a couple of big spoils. That's good. I think he's uh, the reigning Golden Fist Award is Jesmer Arnold. He got the award last year um, for the best backman, Golden Fist they call it. So he's He's obviously trying to get that trophy back again this year, mate. So he's Jeez, if he wins that, mate, we'll never hear the end of that. There's a lot of things that Jez Marnell's talking about at the moment. About wraps up uh, episode two of The Nest this week, Aaron. Look, mate, we've, got, we've already bought, beat Magpie Mania. They only had the one episode, Kutsi and uh, Frenchy. So we've got the episode two, and, and obviously look, watch this space because we'll have some more stuff coming. Yep, no worries.